Uh, and the Achievement Award, just to pick up on that, Hella, for you, why did you put your name to an Achievement Award? Why is it so important to you? I have, I've thought of the Achievement Award as very important to recognize a people, leader of, of our country, people who participating on the truth and success, people who is our ambassador everywhere they go, and people, we will remember them now and in the future, and they have done a great job. This is the idea, really, I thought, you know, uh, to recognize a people like Dr. Rafi'a and my dear friend, the man I'm proud of, Mr. Abu Ghaffar Hussein, the man which always I like to sit with him and talk with him a lot of things. Thank you. Sir, the, it seems to me that there's been a very significant shift in the way that the UAE is undertaking its foreign policy in the last 12 months or so. Are you in agreement with the way that the UAE is conducting its foreign policy at the moment? The question was from this dear gentleman here about the change in the shift of UAE foreign policy in recent years. He was just interested to get your opinions. Were you in agreement or disagreement with the UAE with regards to their change in foreign policy? I didn't think UAE had changed their foreign policy. UAE is, you know, transparent, and UAE is uh, very, I can repeat, uh, very much transparent to the world that uh, we have a great relationship with the West, with Asia, with the world, and we are, uh, I mean, with the GCC, we are the backbone of GCC. Uh, we are the, 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 always we like to, uh, strengthen the GCC and uh, to strengthen our relationship with the West. And the, uh, well, uh, I cannot avoid talking to Mr. Khalaf. He's my friend. <laughs> and uh, We agree on a few points and disagree. And as he said, because he's standing, I must stand also. <laughs> this is the Arabic way. But because here I see there is a student and I, I would like really to make things clear in our opinion. What Mr. Khalaf is saying is his own opinion. It's not the people of UAE believe on uh, the power of Netanyahu. Actually, Mr. Khalaf, you agree that now so many American writers writing that America, the whole American is kidnapped by Israel. The Zionist is controlling the government of this powerful country in the world. We all know that, Mr. Khalaf. Yes, they for Netanyahu and they disrespect our people when they go there. And Netanyahu, he did not even take permission from the White House to go there and to give a speech and that, just to show you how powerful that this small isolated country in the Arab region uh, control the American power and all. We do agree in many things. The human rights uh, issue, this is another game the West played with us. If you are with us, you are good people. If you are not with us, you are bad people. They play it all the time. But I, I am so pleased that you raised the issue today about the human rights. It's nothing to do with the human rights. The worst situation is there. We saw it. We live there in, 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 in Europe. We, we saw the discrimination and many issues, even in the issue of women. The Islamic uh, people here, the women, can buy and sell property since the history. In Europe, in UK, I think it's only 150 years women are allowed to own property and to inherit the property. So we are advanced in many issues. The, the issue is the media of the West, how they want to put the stereotype of the Arab region, and sometimes they use the woman as an issue to interfere with our country. And that's why the Women Museum is playing a role in that. <laughs> Thank you. Just to pick up on that uh, great point that was just made, it's a question I'm sure a number of people have. The Arab world, it's a phrase that is used in Western media, but do Western media understand the Arab world? Well, I think, I think, I think, I think, no, no, we don't want, are you going to ask me or should I? Go ahead, Tony. You, you I'm, go ahead, I'm worried, Tony, from your question. As a PR man, in your book, you said that the Israelis 
have won the PR war. You said how clever they have been. You, when I say admired, you admired their methods, their methodology. Do you think that the Arab nation, the Arab people, can learn uh, to improve their PR and the perception uh, of the nation? And I said in the beginning, when I spoke about Netanyahu, and then my uh, panel speech with President Carter and Congress Friendly in the university, I said he's the biggest criminal and he was butchering children, men and women. I didn't, but I have to respect him. For, I mean, I should not be like the people that write in the social media, abusing and talking a lot of nonsense. I mean, he represents his country. He represents his people. He is, you know, defending his people. This is what I like. This is number one. Number two, I'm not against democracy. But I don't want the democracy which is in so many countries in the Arab world. I don't want to pinpoint where. Look to the democracy, what happened, what they call it, this, the, and, 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 and where? Uh, in Lebanon. <laughs> in Lebanon, there is, I mean, hundred rulers everywhere. See what happened in democracy in Libya. See what democracy in, Le in uh, Yemen. See democracy in Iraq. See democracy in everywhere. They damage. I don't want that democracy. I am happy with my rulers. I'm happy with my ruler on this state, uh, United Arab Emirates, with my president and vice president and the other ruler. We are one part family. One, we are one family with one roots, with one vein. Therefore, we don't want to import democracy from the West. Leave it to them. Look to the Western now. They are here more than 200 nationality living here. The reason of that, why? Because it is safe haven. They are well protected. The, uh, my, 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 my government and my security taking care of every single one here. We are equal, whether I'm citizen or he is from Sweden or Africa or wherever. We are one. Go to the school. I own a school called Emirates International School. We have over 100 nationality teachers. Teachers. We have over 120 children, men, uh, girls and boys, studying there with different colors, black, white, Caucasian, okay? And we are happy with them. This is why they are living in this country, because this is the safe haven. Everybody, everybody making money, everybody gaining. And if they are talking against the country, I think the door is open, the airport is open. I, as a citizen of this country, and I mean it's every single word, if I'm not happy about the country, I will leave. But this is the country where I put my head in the pillow, I can sleep. This is the country I can drive. If my president and my vice president of the country driving on their own and going to a coffee shop and having coffee and eating with, with, the, with the waiters and everywhere, I mean, where to find this? Can you approach the, the uh, close by the Prime Minister of England, there's a lot of secret service everywhere. You and I will be in jail. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. This is the greatest country on earth. Of course, I mean, we are not coming blessed from God. We are, we make a mistake. We make a mistake, but we are better than everybody in the world, believe me. We are better in everything. So um, I actually met Ms. Hub, Mr. Habtour a couple of years ago. Where yeah, look I, at me, look at them. Okay. <laughs> Talk to me, yeah. No, okay, okay. Well, I'm discussing everyone in the room. But um, I interviewed you a couple of years ago in your offices, and um, this was for the Wall Street Journal Dow Jones. So actually, my background is I'm a member of the Western media. Um, but... Um, there's been some really interesting comments about you know, how powerful the Western media is, how biased it is. Um, but really, the game has changed. It's now about social media, which we also touched upon. So I, as a journalist, um, realized this. And in fact, that's why now I'm no longer a journalist. I have a social media agency. And what I find is you know, complaining about Western media not telling the story right 
that's true. But now, social media is way, way more powerful. You have 1.3 billion people on Facebook, and they're actively on Facebook. So what I would like to see is UAE businesses, personalities, people in the public eye, taking social media seriously. Um, from what I've seen, and I've spoken to a lot of companies who are on social media, their office manager is dealing with all their social media content. And they're not interested in actually getting proper writers to write their story online in the correct way. And I was just wondering, what are your thoughts on that? Because this seems to be epidemic in the so UAE, you want unfortunately. Say? I want to you say... Explain, you are now promoting your company. <laughs> I'm not... Well, I'm... Freedom of speech. Freedom of speech, right? So, so what I'm saying is, um, how, how can you promote taking social media seriously for companies in the UAE? Because I feel that this is a risk factor that they're not taking seriously when I compare them to other companies. First of all, thank you very much, Amos. Uh, first of all, personally, I don't know how to do the social media, to be honest to you. I don't know how to put uh, Instagram or uh, Twitter or this, or Facebook, or to open them even. I mean, I'm, I don't want to, uh, 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 to tell you something. Uh, but I have department, media and communication, which they are, where are they? Highly paid, and I'm going to fire a few of them. They are doing that. <laughs> um, Social media, unfortunately, especially of people who are commenting on this, for example, in issues. Some of them, they have maybe 100 accounts, one person. I think Mr. Al Jarallah will agree with me. 100 accounts and they with different names and they are abusing the social media. They are talking a lot of nonsense and that is unacceptable. We have to make, make a rule. I mean, when I mean, I don't mean I myself or my country. I mean the center of the social media should have a, a, a control of these people who is attacking and and saying a very very bad thing. You will find one person maybe on hundred account. You know, doing this, and maybe he's one of the parties which I am against that party. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Khalaf, what do we Khalaf Al-Jarara? And I'm Ahmed Al-Habtour. And I'm done. It is an honor. It is an honor. It is an honor. An honor. Thank you, sir. <laughs> we now move to the main point of uh, business this afternoon as we're running out of time. Uh, it is the awarding of the 2015 uh, uh, Hamad Al Habtour Lifetime Achievement Award. As we said, some illustrious recipients of this in previous years. Uh, what is this award for? It goes for the outstanding contribution made by an individual to the cultural and literary life of the community. I'm going to ask the festival director, Isabel Abelhul, to also join us up here on stage. Khalaf, if we could just get your opinions on this. Obviously, this goes to an individual. This particular individual that we honour this year, who is uh, thankfully, in our presence here, is an outstanding man, but he's also a great friend of yours. Please try and explain to people out there what this man has achieved during a wonderful career. Let me put, I mean, phrase it in a small this. This gentleman, Abdul Ghaffar Hussein, he is the most honest person I have ever seen in my life since day, when the, the, the day I met him. I met him and the late Muhammad Musa, I mean, the best friend I have seen. He is transparent, he is honest to say whatever in his heart, and he is, I like the way he approached things, I like the way he, he is uh, the proper and the, the real ambassador of this country overseas, an official like me. You know, which is, we are not paid to be ambassadors. <laughs> and we, we, ha we have a lot of talks together, you know. I don't want to tell you the secret. <laughs> Isabel. Please can we ask the lifetime recipient, Mr. Abdul Ghaffar Hussain, to join us. Abdul Ghaffar. The 2015 Khalaf Ahmed Al Habtour Life Lifetime Achievement Award goes to Abdul Ghaffar. Hussein, Emirati businessman and writer, passionate reader, prolific writer, a linguist, proficient in Arabic, English and Farsi, 
an avid collector of books and manuscripts, one of the founding members of Dubai Municipality, instigator for Dubai's first public library and museum, a man who helped to establish the Cultural Foundation, written and published hundreds of articles on a wealth of subject matter, author of eight books and the reader of thousands. I think we'll leave this here, and then we can speak of Mr. Alfaro if you want to comment Please. later. Yeah. Let us present this one. And then I'm going to so the presentation will now take place. Isabel will aid Khalaf in presenting the award. Abdul Hafa Hussain, awarded Person of the Year Award in 1998, the recipient this year of the 2015 Khalaf Ahmed Al Habtour Lifetime Achievement Award. Ladies and gentlemen, Abdul Gaffer Hussain. أولا شكرا لجبيل أبو الهول أم منصور على هذا الترتيب الرائع والجميل لحفلات هذا المؤتمر العالمي للأداب في دبي شكرا أم منصور على هالجهود الطيبة لجعل, لجعل هذا المؤتمر ناجح ويعكس صورة جميلة لدبي وللإمارات شكرا لك أبو راشد اللي تبنى هذا المؤتمر الكبير اللي فيه تكريم لأدباء عالميين جاءوا من كل أنحاء العالم وشكرا خاصا لك يا ابو راشد على هذه اللفته الكريمه لتكريمي انا في هذا اليوم انا حقيقه معجب ببو راشد وعصاميه ابو راشد ابو راشد من بين القلائل حقيقه ليس في هذه المنطقه بل ممكن في منطقتنا العربيه كلها وخاصه الاقليمي الخليجي أن جمع بين خصلتين الخصلتين هذه ما ممكن تتاح لكل الناس جمع بين الثقافة والفكر وجمع بين المال يعني هو عصامي في الخصلتين وهذه من الأشياء النادرة اليوم اللي ممكن أن يحصل في العالم بين الفكر النير وبين الاقتصاد الناجح وتسخير هذا الاقتصاد بطبيعة الحال لمصلحة الإنسانية براشد يساهم في الجامعات براشد يساهم في الجمعيات الخيرية براشد له أيادي بيضاء على الطب وعلى جميع هذا جميع الأشياء اللي تنفع الإنسان براشد سياسي ايضا يتحدث في السياسه بلغه يعني يفهمها وايد انا لا استطيع ان اجاري وكثير من الاخرين لا يستطيعون ان يجارونه براشد ملم هذا الالمام الكبير بما يجري في العالم وخاصه في اقليمنا الخليجي وفي العالم العربي اخر مقاله طبعا لبراشد عن استقبال الرئيس التركي في في المملكه السعوديه وطبعا انتقاده لهذا الاستقبال لانه يرى ان تركيا تساند بعض المنظمات الارهابيه في المنطقه وهذا طبعا بطبيعه الحال راي سياسي ممكن وايدين يوافقون عليها انا ابارك جهودك يا ام منصور شكرا شكرا جزيلا يا ام منصور وابارك جهودك يا ابو راشد وشكرا جزيلا والسلام عليكم. Ladies and gents, the recipient of the 2015 Khalaf Ahmed Al Habtour Lifetime Achievement Award. Ladies and gents, please put your hands together one final time for the great man that is Abdul Gaffa Hussein. 
a national figure of excellence, a man of dedication, a man of integrity, and a man of honor. A man who is here to answer your questions uh, for a little bit longer as well. As is, of course, the man who hands his name to this award. A huge thanks to uh, all the Al Habtor Foundation, Al Habtor Group, for sponsoring this particular session. Huge thanks to all the uh, translators at the back of the room for looking after us so well throughout proceedings today, giving us a big wave over there. Thank you. Uh, thanks also to all the room staff. Thanks very much indeed to you for being here and being so lively and interactive. Uh, thank you to Dubai Duty Free for sponsoring the day. A couple more thank yous. One to Emirates Airline uh, for sponsoring the entire festival. Another to Isabel Abel Hall, the director of the festival, for delivering yet another world-class event. And finally, to all the team at Dubai Culture. That's it for this particular session. And of course, enjoy the remainder of the Emirates Airline Festival of Literature.